you think you've had a hard time dating? I met this guy a couple of months ago. We met organically. He saw me walking through the airport during a layover. We end up on the same flight and we land in Miami. He asked me for my number. Cool, very kind about it, very much a gentleman. During my trip to Miami, he calls a couple of times and we had like very casual conversations. And But I do notice that he's throwing out those trigger words. Uh, high value man, traditional woman, blah, blah, blah. But I just figured like, you know, it's stuff that you're picking up off the internet, watching Kevin Samuels, and there's only so much you can pick up because Kevin Samuels is now dead. So, you know, whatever. Anyways, I get back from my vacation and two weeks, it's like two weeks later, he asked me to come to the state that he lives in to go on a date. And so I'm like, okay, fine. He buys my flight and I buy a hotel because I don't want to stay at his house. I don't know him like that. And we go on a date. Uh, I quickly realized that we're not compatible. We have very different ideology. I let him know. I think, you know, this is probably just going to be it, whatever. I get back home and he's still calling. So he seems to be taking notes on what I'm saying. So I'm like, all right, let me just give it a chance. Let me not just be too critical about it. It's early stages, whatever. Cool. So one day he calls me and he says that he just got out of a conversation with his friends. Um, and that first that he believes that if you are in a relationship, so if he's in a relationship with a woman, that he would require for her to have her location on at all times. And I said, okay. And um, he says that these two people that he was having a conversation with, the girlfriend did not have the location on for the boyfriend, but she had a location on for her mom and her sister. And the boyfriend was upset. And so they turned to him and asked him his opinion. This is what he said. And he was his response to them both was, quote, that this bitch is cheating on you. And so I asked him if he thought that was a proper response. And he told me, yes. And so I said, okay. And then, I, I mean, he could tell that I just didn't agree, but I didn't say anything because there's no point anymore. We're not compatible. And I already told you this. So he um, then continues to tell me a story. He says that this same young lady who had her location on for her mom uh, was driving someplace out in Georgia where they live and she something happened to her car and she's stranded on the, top, the side of the road. So she calls her boyfriend and his response to her was that she needed to call her mom and her sister who lived out of state that she did have her location on and not the man that's her boyfriend that she's probably kissing in the mouth. And so I asked him again, did you think that this was a proper response? And he told me, yes. So we go back and forth about this for a little minute because I can't really wrap my head around why you would think that any of this would be okay. And I let him know, like, you know, one issue is that you're referring to this woman as a bitch in front of her face. And like, you know, every time you refer to her in a conversation, you refer to her as that bitch, which is insane. But also why you thought the proper response was to leave this woman on the side of the road if you care about her, that's weird. And so we go back and forth about this. And then when I think that we've gotten to a point of reason and I'm like, you know, I'm trying to explain my point of view or like why this isn't proper for a man to be doing, he gets quiet and says, do you know what you are? You're a bitch that doesn't know how to see through the bullshit. Why are you so hung up on me calling this woman a bitch? It doesn't make a difference. And then he says that he made up this entire story to prove a point. What that point was, I have no idea. But yeah. I also wanted to add that this man was 36 years old, never been married, doesn't have any kids, a six-figure earner. He has a hauling company out in Georgia, and he has alarms on his phone three times a day to remember to pray to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.